Hi, in my previous video I did a teardown of this classic HP 85 and it was very interesting, so click here if you haven't seen that. But, um, I put it back together afterwards and I went to power it up and... Hmm, not even the power LED's coming on. zippity doo da. Oops! So, I'm going to try and troubleshoot this thing, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> I did do something stupid though. When I reassembled it, I completely forgot to put this ground in, earth grounding strap from the chassis here up to the main, uh, main power supply board up here. Now, I don't think that's going to matter, but technically I switched it on and it did nothing and then I had a quick look around inside and I noticed that was actually um, it disconnected. So I've reconnected that now and it still does exactly the same thing. So yeah, I don't know. Let's go through and troubleshoot this puppy. Should be fun anyway. Now granted this could be as easy as uh, me just having left a cable out or a bad connection or something like that. Um, so let's have a squeeze around. I don't know. I Maybe you won't see this video. Or it'll just go on my second channel. I don't know, but let's start. First thing I'm going to do is a very quick uh, primary transformer test, make sure I haven't blown the fuse because that ground could have caused an overload, a lack of ground or something, I don't know. Let's uh, check that out. Nope, 54 ohms, that's alright for a uh, transformer primary, so nothing wrong there. Uh, fuse hasn't blown, so it should be powering up. Now I really don't think that leaving off that uh, earth strap down in there would have caused any issue. Why? Because this is the power, this is the transformer power output here, okay? And look, it's got an earth wire. It looks like, well, it does go down to earth if you actually follow that down. So that middle thing there, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure between that pin, the middle pin, and the earth strap, which is right down in here and it is a dead short. So it's actually connected on the board. So it's just an alternate path for the um, earth there. So it was, you know, it didn't make any difference. So leaving that strap off would not have blown anything. So can't be that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is measure the output of the uh, transformer secondary to make sure we've got our voltage going over here. It should do, um, because we're measuring the uh, primary. So I'll go between one of the pins there and there, bingo, 14 volts AC. The other one, it should be like a center tap. There we go. Yep, that I don't know what the actual value should be, but hey, you know, 15 volts AC aside, sounds right to me. And anyway, what we need to check is that the power supply board here is actually getting power, and it is. So that's fine. Next step. Now, at this point, it would be wise to actually have the schematic, and we do have the schematic available, but I'm lazy, and also, um, you know, really, you shouldn't need it at this point. I mean, there's some obvious stuff here. Here's one of the main uh, filter caps, one of the big blue filter caps on the thing, those big studs down in there. So, bingo, I can actually uh, get in there and measure that big capacitor stud. Are we getting a voltage on it? Wah, 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 wah. 0.1 volts on a 25 volt cap. There you go. So that cap there, 25 volt DC, has got basically bugger all across it. Not zero, but that could just be some residual charge or something. So, has something gone? Now, at this point, once you realize there's no voltage on that cap, this is where you'd probably get out the schematic, or I can take out the whole module and just have a visual check to make sure, I don't know, but yeah, it's like, I don't know what would have blown on this thing, um, or how I could have blown anything, leaving that earth strap off, I've already verified that that should not have done anything, and nothing went pop, didn't smell anything, no magic smoke escaped, um, so yeah, it's just, not powering up, but there's something no wrong. There's no voltage across that cap. There damn well should be. Otherwise, what the hell's it there for? Now, we've got the schematic, but hey, we didn't have to go to the schematic at this point. We still could have uh, started, you know, and kept probing around, not just randomly monkey bashing on keys, hoping to get Shakespeare uh, probing around, but, you know, we could have um, basically uh, troubleshot this thing without the schematic, but we've got it to hand. So let's have a look. Now, we've established that we've got our AC on here, by the way, here is, uh, here's the ground, and there's that earth strap. 
Okay, so that shows that's going down to Earth and this is going down to Circuit Common. You can see the ground or, or you know, ground, not Earth, like chassis Earth. So that one's going down to chassis. Um, now, the cap we actually measured uh, was this one over here, 4,500 microfarads right over here. Okay, so that's the main plus 12 volt rail. Okay, um, so we're not getting that out. So the first thing I'd check, as I was going to do it anyway, is measure across the other main cap, which is our main output uh, filter cap for our full wave bridge rectifier here. So let's just measure that one quickly. Um, interestingly, we've got a crowbar circuit there. That's nice. Uh, any over voltage will uh, clamp it uh, down. And, you know, like if you accidentally plugged in, uh, you know, had it set to two, uh, 110 volts and you plugged in your 240, then the crowbar is going to act and hopefully save the rest of it. It might blow the arse out of your crowbar, but hey, <laughs> save the rest. So um, anyway, we've got ourselves a crowbar. Uh, the uh, transformer here is actually not a trans... Well, it's being used as an inductor, basically. It's not like an isolated uh, transformer. Anyway, interestingly, I see a fuse in there. So, aha, uh -huh, that's the one of the... After we check voltage across here, I'd be checking the continuity of that fuse. So the voltage across that cap, it's way, way down in there. So you don't want to go have both probes in there because you don't want to short, accidentally short out. You would maybe get the adapters which have the um, insulated, you know, the Cat4 adapters on there that just e expose the uh, points like that. Um, but I don't need to because we've got that handy earth strap. So down there with the earth strap and in we go. And what do we get? 36.6 volts, it's just fine. So nothing wrong with our full wave bridge rectifier. So to access that fuse now, I had to take out the entire assembly, but hey, it was easy. Four screws and the entire assembly just uh, swings out. Or five if you count the uh, earth strap there, as, and we can still power it up from the AC, because it's just AC in here. We don't have a load on it, of course, but hey, it's good enough. We can at least get in there, access stuff, and power it up without powering up any of the uh, high voltage uh, CRT stuff over there either. So nice and safe. And I've mentioned this before, but uh, you know, we've got a lot of energy in that huge uh, cap up in here. So you just want to make sure it's drained. So this is where your low impedance uh, mode on one of these low Z ranges can uh, really come in handy. Actually, I can just go from the uh, earth strap there. There we go. And uh, probe that. There we go. It's already discharged, so no worries. Uh, I don't, yeah, it's already gone. They don't have a bleeder resistor on it, but uh, yeah, the rest of it just discharged it. So it, there's no energy left in that. So it's safe to go probing around, not from a high voltage point of view. I mean, 35 volts is fine, but just from an energy point of view um, and uh, certainly uh, measuring ohms and uh, things like that, which we want to go do, measure our fuse. We don't want uh, any voltages in there upsetting any of our readings. It's actually really annoying that there's no component designators on the uh, uh, board here. No uh, silk screen overlay on the thing. So it's a bit annoying. So you can either trace things out or we can go to a component overlay, which is in the service manual. But we don't need to do that here because we know it's on the, uh, around the transformer there. There it is. It's like, uh, there we go, near uh, Q2 there, but we don't know where Q2 is, but uh, it's in series, like it's near one of the taps of the transformer. Anyway, that's all we need to know. So if you have a look around here, well, which one looks like a fuse? Bingo, that one there. So let's just uh, measure that. Should be zero. Bingo. Gotcha. Yep. Fuse blowing. So no wonder we're getting nothing on the uh, output of that big uh, 4500 mic cap wheel measuring the main 12 volt rail because bingo, that fuse is blowing. Wah. But why is it blowing? Does it have to do with that earth strap which I foolishly left off? I, I still don't think so. I can't see a mechanism that would do it because the, um, it, it already still had the connection there. So uh, via the cable instead of the strap. So I, coincidence? I don't know. Is there a short somewhere else on the 12 volt rail uh, throughout our circuit? Maybe on another board? Perhaps something like that. So what we should actually do is, although we just measured some voltage on there before, so it's not going to be a dead short, but just for kicks, we'll just measure the resistance across our uh, 12 volt rail here. All right, so let's just measure that cap. 
Oh, hello. Oh, no, no, there we go. No, that was just, uh, and now you can see the cap charging up. Watch now, because the cap's charged up, if we swap our probes around, ha, we get zero in the other direction as well. So just wait a bit, wait a bit. So we put the probes on backwards and it had some residual charge, so it caused the meter to just display zero. Trap for young players, um, di different meters will vary uh, depending on um, how they're, uh, you know, the chipset and how they measure ohms and everything else. So yeah, not every meter is going to be performed the same when you're forcing a voltage onto here during the, uh, when you've got the resistance range. Let's take the venerable Fluke 87, for example, and let's uh, probe this puppy. 175, 176K. Wow. Wow, it doesn't... <laughs> no, I like the uh, EV blog meter much better. Anyway, if we swap it, what do we get? <laughs> Minus 176K. There you go. Like, completely... Well, I was going to say completely opposite, pun intended. Um, it, so it doesn't show zero. So a lot of meters are going to perform differently here. By the way, one thing I am uh, suspecting, when I took these uh, ribbon cables out, there were two of them in particular. This one that uh, went is actually the output of the power supply. Um, it, was mis it was a bit misaligned on the pins. Um, apparently, like, those connectors um, actually let you put them in at like an offset angle and maybe um, it either wasn't connected or could have been shorting out uh, two pins or something like that. So that could easily have caused it. So I, I'm going to assume that uh, that was the cause of the problem, i.e. me, idiot me, actually didn't, you know, I just shoved them back in thinking it would like self-align on the edges and all the pins and um but no i think they were almost touching i didn't actually measure it but it just looked that way and then boom it popped out and you know but yeah i think that could have been the issue that would certainly explain a blown fuse on the power supply as one of these connectors uh which is mainly power coming over these ribbon cables onto the main board so let's hope that's all it was otherwise it doesn't really make sense i mean i was using this uh, for quite some time and it, it worked just fine. So, you know, yeah, I think I did something reassembling. Now before you jump in and uh, replace that fuse, just do some visual inspection to make sure there's no burnt out uh, traces going over to the power connector here, no burnt out parts or anything like that. Give it a bit of a smell to make sure none of the magic smoke has escaped. It's just got that uh, 30 year old electronics uh, smell. That's the only thing there. Um, but I wouldn't have expected because if I shorted out a power supply on here uh, accidentally between two pins, you know, we've got uh, that 375 milliamp uh, fuse. It's not much. It's going to blow fairly quickly on a short and hopefully we haven't damaged anything else. That's the theory anyway. Ah, 30 year old electronic smoke. Look at that. Just wick that solder out there. Couldn't have been bothered turning on my uh, solder pump. There we go. Fresh holes. Now I know this might look a bit how you're doing, but uh, this is all I had. I couldn't find my axial uh, fuses, and I think I've only got one amp uh, types anyway. So I just uh, bodged in a M205 uh, fuse holder like this. That'll get me out of trouble until I get uh, a proper axial uh, replacement. One, like that, and uh, then I'll whack it back in. But this should get me up and running nice and safely. So let's power this baby up outside of the uh, unit and um, see what we get, shall we? Bingo, 12 volts. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right, so let's measure some other rails. Uh, this will do nicely for our negative. Um, that's our plus 12, which we uh, measured before. The good thing is they don't have silk screen, but they do have it etched in the copper. This should be plus five. Yep, 5.12, that's fine and dandy. That's within the usual 5% uh, uh, tolerance, i.e. 4.75 to 5.25. And usually on high current or high power 
5 volt uh, computers like you know old school stuff like this which chew a bit of uh, current on the 5 volt rail for all the uh, digital logic then you probably want to set it like slightly to the high side you don't want to set you know trim it to precisely 5 volts thinking you're really smart trimming it right like that and then getting drop over the cables and the connectors and the traces and everything else out to the uh, large boards and things like that so it's common to actually set that uh, reasonably high this is plus six yep 6.17 um i think that's it i'm happy with that winner now here's where i think the problem came about this allows me well you see it allows me to put them at an angle that is not lined up hopefully you can see that that is not lined up with those so i've got to be very careful about putting that back in and lined up perfectly with the pins. So I've got to do that for all four of these plus the other ones um, down the bottom go into the uh, CRT display as well. All right, so let's try this again. Here we go. Hopefully I've got it uh, okay. Uh, yes, I've put the earth strap back there, but I, like I said, I that should not matter because uh, it's already connected through the earth of that one. So, anyway, let's go. Hey! Power lead. Power lead. I'm liking the power lead. That means we've got 5 volts on our rail. Bingo! Error 23 self-test. Oh, wow. Wow, something else has screwed up. But the process is working. So we're getting our 5 volts. All our CRTs working, so that's interesting. What self-test has failed? Hmm, Murphy. Eh, that wasn't, that fuse just alone just wasn't going to fix it. Nah, it was never going to be my day. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, look, I have not got the memory expansion pack plugged in. So this one is actually uh, 16K of RAM built onto the main board. It's supposed to be 8K, but uh, maybe it was, you know, and it... Maybe it was an, an optional extra at the factory. Maybe it's an aftermarket update. Um, just plug in extra chips, I, higher capacity chips. I don't know. But 16K on board, that's why we'll get in uh, 32K total with the extra 16K pack. But look, everything's working just fine. I mean, I, I can run programs and, and stuff. And it's, what is error 23? Let's go to the manual. Well, the manual doesn't tell me what the self-test error is, but... Um, Oh, and <laughs> I'm not having a good day. I forgot to plug in the printer and the tape deck. Unbelievable. Let's try that again, shall we? You can do it. Yes, winner. List. Woohoo. And we can actually run the self-test. It's got a test key up here. It's great, and that would have got, uh, there's the uh, CRT, so it's scrolling all the memory, so that was, te oh, nope, 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 we don't have any paper in there, nope, but, yep, it passed the self-test, no worries. Try that again with some paper this time. Scroll that CRT memory, love it, boom, there we go, winner. And I might have to do another video, maybe trying to fix this uh, tape drive, because it doesn't seem to work. I just ran the uh, catalog uh, command cat, and um, you know, it's supposed to read from the tape if there's anything on it. Um, you know, presumably, um, tapes are very reliable, so uh, they had something on there. Um, but yeah, it just it doesn't stop when it rewinds or anything. It just doesn't seem to yeah there's some could be something physical wrong with the uh capstan in there uh not you know pinching correctly or something like that i don't know what the deal is but the motor's whirring and the light's going but it's not doing much else so there you go i hope you enjoyed that little uh repair video <laughs> it was kind of it was good that i uh screwed that up actually it, we got a nice little uh repair out of this as simple as it was a fuse but hey step by step tracking it down eventually found it and then we forgot to plug the cables back in doll double doll and yeah i'm a twit but anyway we fixed it if you like that please give it a big thumbs up and as always um links to other videos are here and subscribe and you know all that sort of stuff and forum and yeah, whatever catch you next time
Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Yes, we're going back to the future of computer technology today, right back to 1977, where it all began. One of the pioneering computers of the modern era and one of the biggest selling computers that a lot of people forget about. Everyone remembers the Apple II and computers like that, but well, this thing was actually the biggest selling computer of its day 